Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Welcome to the class. We are going to wait just a few minutes and then we're going to start, of course. But if you have questions, I, I am here already. It's okay, teacher. Nice.
Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. We're going to start already. And uh, I hope you have a very nice day today. Um, well, today is Friday and next week we are not going to have classes. Just remember that the other week, yes, we're going to have classes, okay? That's the only thing. Okay, we are going to start with uh, the um, question in the platform, of course. So it's this one. So you can see that the question is already there. And then we're going to check the, um, the attendance, of course. Okay, let's see. Okay. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chévez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present teacher. <laughs> Ofelia Orellana Arce. Osmin Baires Solórzano. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Good evening, present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Rosa, el... ah, okay. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Zulma Rosaura López García. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good evening. Good evening. De ladito lo que has puesto. De así de perfil. Uh-huh. From side to side, right? <laughs> okay, we're going to continue and well actually start a class of today. So we're going to start with the presentation and uh, here we go. Let's see. Okay. So um, today is our 20th class and uh, we only miss one week. So very nice. We're almost there. We're going to speak a little bit about warehousing in Latin America. So, of course, Latin America has warehouses, but how big they are, how uh, is going the industry in this one. We're going to check into this by now. Osmin, could you please read the first part? It's okay, teacher. Perfect. Yes. Over the past... 18 months, Latin, Latin America, American has seen its, its a commercial sector grow at record levels. The COVID-19 pandemic brought to over 50 million Latin American to buy online for the first time. This caused demand for retail the warehousing space to sort search across the continent. Okay, thank you. What do you understand on the first paragraph, Osmin? Okay, okay, teacher. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, 
I, I understand in Latin America have problem for the pandemic. Uh, over 50 million. Um, all uh, in this case, it, this is the cause of the man of profitate. Okay, teacher. Okay, perfect. So, uh, yes, this is like a cause effect situation, right? So, it's going to be like, um, well, in the past, the people in Latin America did not uh, did not purchase that much online. Some people did. For example, myself, I always liked to purchase online uh, from China, from Japan, from other countries. But there are people that they never did that. But because of the COVID-19, because of the pandemic, a lot of people in Latin America, they learned that buy online is, is nice. So it's safe and also it's nice because um, the price is not a big difference and the products are good. Of course, sometimes you see a nice picture and sometimes the products are not the way they are on the picture, right? So, but in the most of the cases, everything is fine. Everything is nice. So that caused more than 50 million Latin Americans to buy online in Mayan because of the pandemic, okay? Of course, since we in Latin America are also buying more, more online, uh, well, the demand for retail uh, warehousing space from the companies has increased, has expanded, right? That industry has increased in the last few years, so. We're going to speak about Brazil. It says Brazil is the most dominant market in terms of warehousing, accounting for roughly 50% of total industrial market share, followed by Mexico, Colombia, Chile, and Argentina. So 50% of the total industrial market is in Brazil. 50% of all Latin America. In my how big is that? 50%. Brazil, Brazil is number, number one. Brazil is number one. Definitely. Yeah. Of course, they uh, the country is very big, so they need many uh, logistics things there. Right? But it's a good thing. Uh, Nelson, could you please read the first two paragraphs here? Okay. Brazil. Brazil. Brazil warehouse, warehousing sector has been been yeah. Beonjot, 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 and 2021, uh, despite, despite, despite the ongoing impact of the COVID-19 crisis, most industrial investment in central and around the Sao Paulo infrastructure investment is critical to triving warehouse sector to enable rapid distribution. One of the Bolsonaro government's guard continue to be the modernization of Brazil infrastructure, wide large privatization, privat, privatization and development plan running from airport to highway and ports. Very good, perfect, until there. So uh, what do you understand on this one? Uh, when uh, the 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 country of Brazil and the government, the president, they continue to uh, uh, develop the uh, other infrastructure. Uh, uh, some someone infrastructure, uh, uh, for example, the uh, the highway, uh, the airport, the in the ports, uh, the marit maritimo. I think uh, 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 the the president or, or, or the country of Brazil uh, uh, not have stopped uh, uh, from the pandemic. He he uh, we we are uh, is is development. Stop. 
Very good, perfect, that's good. So yeah, it says Brazil's warehousing sector has been buoyant in 2021. So buoyant is like floating. So it goes up and sometimes it stops and then goes up again. Um, so despite, what is despite? Anybody knows what is despite? Despite the ongoing impact, to say so. Despite what is despite? Okay, despite is something like. Despite is like. If huh? you, when you, when you don't like something and you say. Ooh. How can I explain? Um, oh my God, I don't know how can I can explain, but I know, I know the meaning of the word is, is when you say in Spanish, rechazar. Actually, that is not a spite. No. I guess, no, it's similar maybe to other words. I don't remember which word. Actually. Oh, no, uh -huh. it's like, uh, um, I, I can explain it, but I but I I I remember the word despite is when you say uh, but <laughs> a pesar <Good>. but <laughs> yeah so. it's like something when you say but I very think, good yeah that is it so it's like when you say even though even though so despite right Despite the ongoing impacts of the COVID-19 crisis, what is ongoing? Ongoing in process, no. In process, very good. Yeah. Because we still, we no, still ongoing. are in the pandemic, right? so it's ongoing. We are in an ongoing process of things. Actually, I was reading today that there is a new, a new, um, a new COVID. I don't, I don't remember the word, but it's a new one that is very. A new variant. Uh, yeah, a new variant mm -hmm. of that one. And they discovered that, not discovered today, but they launched today, today the news that in Thailand and in New England and some like that, there, there are places where they are. And it's very, very contagious, but they don't say if it's very dangerous because contagious is different than dangerous right contagious is that very fast you are going to get the sickness but maybe it's like okay i have the sickness and bye right like omicron omicron was kind of hard but you didn't die from that one so uh be careful of that in vacations so it says uh despite the ongoing impacts uh of the covid 19 crisis most industrial investment is centered in and around Sao Paulo. So the most of the industry for the warehousing is there around Sao Paulo, okay? And then it says infrastructure investment is critical to the thriving warehouse sector to enable rapid distribution. So we know that one. So infrastructure is vital for a country. We're speaking about warehousing for a country. One of the Bolsonaro's government's goals continues to be the modernization of Brazil infrastructure. So that is good. If a country invests in their modernization, in the infrastructure of, a, of the country itself, of course, there will be more opportunities, better jobs, and the economy of the country will grow. So that is a very good thing. Even though in Brazil, there is a lot of corruption and poverty, there are a lot of a lot of opportunities. So with large privatization, what is our privatization? I know that you know, but let's see how do you explain privatization. It's no government, is the capital of the, um, the capital with the people, citizen or foreign. Okay. Perfect, mm -hmm. that is it. So it's like when something is not part of the government or it was part of the government and the government says, okay, we're going to sell this. And now the private company is going to manage their resources. 
So, and development plans ranging from airports to highways and ports. So definitely they are investing in this one. So that is a very good thing. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, uh, Rose, could you read the third and fourth paragraph? Okay. Uh, GLP. GLP is the largest owner and developer of warehouses in Brazil with more than 60 facilities and various mega projects under development. Other big investors and developers are also active in this market, including global players such as Brookfield, Prologix, Goodman, Amazon, and Heinz, as well as strong local developers such as EHSA, TRX, Low, and Bresco. Mercado Libre, Latin, America, Latin America's most valuable company, has heavily invested in Brazil and is aiming to close 2021 with over 100 warehouses. Good, perfect. What did you get in this one? Oh, it's talking about that GL, GLP is the largest owner and developer of the warehouses. Um, it's talking about the projects that it has. Um, what else? No, I understand that. That is yeah. a is a the owner developer of the warehouses. Good. So it's like it's telling us what are the companies that are the largest there in Brazil, right? So GLP is the largest, and there are other. I mean, they have sixty facilities, other mega projects under development, so they are building more more warehouses, uh, and there are other big investors and developers. Uh, active in this market, including global players such as Bluefield, Prologies, Goodman, Amazon, and Heinz. Uh, actually, we have Heinz in El Salvador, right? As well as strong local developers such as HSI, TRX, Log, and Briscoe. And then it says Mercado Libre, in Latin America's most valuable company, has heavily invested in Brazil. So they have warehouses there, right? And aiming to close 2021 with over 100 warehouses. So that is a lot. Of space. I never, to be honest with you, I never tried Mercado Libre. Is that good? Have, have you ever tried that for you to purchase online? Anybody has tried that? Because I try eBay, I try Amazon, uh, but Mercado Libre, I mean, it's mostly from Mexico and I don't trust that much. I know but that- it was famous, Mercado Libre, it was famous. Also, I think that nowadays continue to be famous, but nowadays you you listen more Amazon, uh, what else? Um, eBay. Yeah, eBay mm -hmm. and Amazon for me are the best. I mean, mm -hmm. you can find mm -hmm. a lot of products uh, at a good price, and they send you the, the items. There's a new one. I don't I don't know if you are listening about it. AliExpress. I tried that already. It's nice. Yeah. I I, I I didn't buy, but uh, a friend of mine uh, buy something for me and it's nice. Yeah, yeah. good time. It's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, but for me, it took a little time. I mean, it was like three months, um, but at the end it was oh, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, there are very good deals. For example, I purchased a ring that is very nice ring, you know. In yeah, one I, 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 I bring a... Uh, how do you say pulsera? <laughs> a bracelet. Oh, yes. I brought a bracelet. And I like it. Yeah, it's, it's good. I mean, yeah. Sometimes you need to buy small things first and then you can jump into other things. Yes. But that, like that is, cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Nice. Yeah. But this is the only one that I, I never try my calorie, to be honest. Okay, let's move on. The next one uh, we say that was Mexico. So we have Mexico here. Uh, let's see. Salmi, could you please read the first and second paragraph? Yes, teacher. Mexico, with approximately 80% of Mexican export heading to the US, is the hub dividing 
administration will strengthen strength the strengthen. relation strengthen the relationship between these two North America free trade agreement countries. The Mexico government recently launched the National Development Plan to 2019-2024 with focus of, on transportation, infrastructure, development. This includes our re-envisioned ambition. airport system for Mexico City and the development of a multimodal cargo corridor. Yeah, corridor. Corridor across the isthmus of the Huantepec. That is it, very good. What did you get into this one? <laughs> yeah, um, the Mexico is the other country, the is high participation in the sector of the distribution in the warehouse because the market the, the market is 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 a large huge and um, the other advantage is the North America free trade agreement countries because it's a, a specific agreement for commercial between the countries. And the other good point is the, in general, in the, the plans relate, related to the investment for the infra, 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 infrastructure, infrastructure in, the, in the countries is the plan of the long term. In, in this case, in this plan include the, the improved to transportation uh, and transportation infrastructure development. It's, it's a good, it's good for this sector. Very nice. So yeah, they are very big as well. So yeah. yeah, and they have a lot of commerce, a lot of production, a lot of things going on there. So let's check it out, it says, with approximately 80% of Mexican exports heading to the mm -hmm. US. So yeah. that is very good yeah. because they have a lot of production and next to them, they have yeah. the US. So it's going to be easier yes. and very convenient for them, right? Exactly. So it's hoped the Biden administration will strengthen. What is strengthen? Anybody knows? Is the... Uh, say the advantage it's like an advantage yeah it's like getting something stronger right it's the stronger, relationship yeah. is like it's stronger okay and it says the relationship between these two north american free trade agreement countries of course you know what is a free trade agreement and uh, the mexico government recently launched what is to launch is um the introduce or the introduce the plan or the presentation of the plan. Very good, that's it. So when you present something that is new, right? The mm -hmm. National Development Plan 2019-2024 with uh, which focuses on transportation infrastructure development. So they are going to uh, also invest in infrastructure, yeah. right? So that is very good as well, very, yeah. very good. And it says uh, this includes the re envisioned. What's re envisioned? Anybody knows? The review, the last issue, and the get the new plans about the result of result of the revision. Very good, revision. actually, that is it. Revision is when you change the vision uh, that is for your objectives or anything like that. So it's to change the point of view on what you want to do, right? So that is it. Okay. In general, teacher, 
the is is um is very important the re, re, revision in the plans for the government. Uh, one problem in our countries is that the plan for the long term doesn't continue for the new new three parties. It's okay, the politicians. Yeah. Yeah, because party. it's not the plan for the country; it's plan for the specific interest, the interest of this the sector of the politician. That is true, and that is very sad. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, yeah, politics is very complicated because um, yeah. we have uh, different points. But that is true. I mean, when when a government changes, they change many things, right? Maybe yeah. one thing was going well and they change or stop the plan and you say, oh my goodness. And sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes they bring new ideas that are very nice, but it would be better. It would be better if uh, they focus on the, on the improvement of the country, right? Yeah. I believe, and yeah. I believe that everybody agrees that it's going to be, it will be very easy uh, for people to stay in the power if they do very good things for the people. So if you see the, the things that they're doing, you might say, oh no, they're working very well. Let's continue with them. But yes. we see that we change the government, but it's the same situation and we are the same, right? We are worse sometimes. So, well, it's a big problem there. Yes, yeah, it's a big problem and for the old countries on the Latin America. <laughs> Latin America is the same, that is true. I mean, there are countries yeah. that are a little bit more developed, but in the politics is, I guess, the same. Yeah. So, well, let's see what happens from here to 10 years. I don't know. So what else it says, the development of a multimodal cargo corridor. So in this case, a cargo corridor, it means that they are develop, uh, developing this specific way that they are going to, like the highways for them to transport everything. So it's going to be like a path, a way for you, them to, to get all the production from Mexico to the US. So they are going to have a specific roads. So that is it. And it's in that place, in that isthmus. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Sandra, could you please read this, the third and the fourth paragraph? Four? The, the third and the fourth. Ah, third and fourth. Yeah, please. Global, global retailers such as Amazon. Mercado Libre and Walmart are strong. DHL also has significant plans in the market as they, they look to modernize the distributions and when having a fully electric fleet by the end of 2021. The pandemic has expedited this expedited. Expedited the maturity of the uh, commerce in Mexico, but with only uh, 65? 65. 65 persons of the total population connected to internet. There is still pl pl plenty of scope for this market to grow. Very good, perfect, thank you. So again, this last part is about the largest, uh, in the, or the largest companies in the, in the country so that they are uh, using warehousing. So it says, Global retailers such as Amazon, Mercado Libre, and Walmart are strong. DHL also has significant plans in this market as they look to modernize their distribution and have a fuel electric fleet by the end of 2021. So that is very good. They are going to have um, electric ways of transportation. So that is going to be nice. The pandemic has expedited the maturity of the e-commerce in Mexico. Uh, do you remember what is expedite? Anybody? It's accelerate or speed up something. Very good. 
is to accelerate or send something faster, right? It's anything like that. But with only 65% of the total population connected to the internet, there's still plenty of scope for this market to grow. So imagine 65% of the total population are connected to the internet. So um, how do you think he's in El Salvador? I mean, 65% oh, is not that much. For Mexico, that is a very big country with a lot of industries and a lot of development. But I mean, they have only 65%. It's a very good question to check. What is the percentage of total population connected to internet in El Salvador? Right. Yes, in El Salvador, is connected online for chats and in class. Yeah, so I, well, a lot of people, I believe that I, I don't know a, a single person that they don't it's, have. Is online is uh, mundial, global? Uh -huh, global. Okay, good. So now we're gonna move to Argentina, Chile, and Colombia. Uh, let's see, uh, Flor, could you please read this one? The, the first and the second paragraph only. Teacher, 57% of the you say population for population. population of El Salvador is connecting. 57 percent is a lot of it's a lot because we are not as industrial as Mexico, right? So yeah, that's what I was telling you. I mean, I believe it's a high percentage because I don't know one person that doesn't have internet, right? So all the people that I know they have internet either in the cell phone or at home. So it's something that we really need. But we thank you, uh, Sami. Flor, could you please start? We cannot hear you. I don't know what's going on. We cannot hear you. Since that maybe there is a problem with the connection or anything like that. We can see you, but we cannot hear you. Nothing at all. You have to stand up and dance and then it's gonna get fixed. No, it's not true. Okay, maybe you can check it out. And Pamela, could we, uh, Pamela is not there, right? I can't see that. I can try? Uh, yeah, please. Hola, hola. Uh, now I can hear your floor. So I, I, I believe there is a problem there. Okay. Hola? Hello? Hello? Yes, we can hear you now. Hello? Argentina is the third largest economy in Latin America. But the logistic and freight market is expected to grow at a slower pace. That a is weather in the rich in the region. Argentine government investment in log in logistics infrastructure have not kept pace with the other major economy in Latin America. Never there never there's nevertheless. Nevertheless, commerce has grown rapidly, boosting invest investment in warehousing and logistics centers. Buenos Aires, a state Mercado Libre, has grown to be the largest company in Latin America by market value. Good, thank you. So, um, yeah, it says, I believe that there is nothing to interpret. It's very clear here. Argentina is the third 
a largest economy in Latin America, but the logistics and freight market is expected to grow at a slower pace than elsewhere in the region. So they have a big economy. It's the third economy in the in the uh, in the Latin America, but the uh, the market and the logistics sector is not that big and is growing very very slow. Mm, that is interesting. So it says, and your teen government investment in logistics infrastructure have not kept pace with the other major economies in Latin America. So they have a big opportunity. If they are right now the third economy in Latin America, and imagine that they invest money in the infrastructure, well, that would be a big push for them, I guess. So it's pretty sad that they are not taking advantage of that one. What is pace? Anybody knows what is pace? Pace. I, I never hear. I never hear. I never hear uh, that word. But I look in, and it's mean like a rate. Like a rate, like um, yeah. Sometimes you can say that you are at a slow pace when you're walking as well. So it's the way that you are moving on right the, the the way that you're growing oh, yeah. uh -huh. a, manner, going a manner of walking through mm -hmm. yeah there so are it's... many like a bird uh, like a bird is to move along to mm -hmm. proceed yeah oh, nice very good perfect thank and you work. <laughs> nice that's why we are here <laughs> the other word uh, is nevertheless what is nevertheless Anybody it's know? Or, or their place? Mm. Or the country? No, that is elsewhere. But nevertheless, it's different. It's a conjunction, actually. So it's like when we say even though, or despite. Do you remember despite? So this is very similar to despite. So nevertheless, E-commerce has grown rapidly, boosting investment in warehousing and logistics centers. What is boosting? Anybody knows what boosting means? Boost. Boost is increase. Very good. That is it. To boost is increasing. <laughs> that is it. Boosting is increasing when something is loading and it's charging ah, more. Has grown rapidly boosting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. And then it says Buenos Aires based Mercado Libre has grown to be the largest company in Latin America by market value. So it seems that Mercado Libre is very popular. Maybe I have to check into that one more. Good. The other paragraphs are going to be for Susana. Could you please read the third and the fourth paragraph? Hi, third and four. Okay. Chile is one of the most open economies in the Latin America region. It has boosted its try through its membership of the trans. I'm sorry, of the Trans Pacific Partnership alongside Mexico and Peru and eight other countries. Colombia has invested strongly in free trade zones, attracting for getting invested, like Brazil and Mexico. Colombia also has national plan to, build, to develop logistic infrastructure. Okay, so now we're talking about the other two countries, right? Chile is one of the most open economies in the Latin America region. So that means that they do a lot of things. So they are open to do business with anybody. So that is good, right? That is very nice. It has boosted its trade through its membership of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So this is also a trade uh, uh, plan that they have with other countries, with Mexico actually, and Peru, and eight other countries. And in the last paragraph, he's talking about Colombia has invested strongly in free trade zones. What are free trade zones? Do you remember? It's free tax in, in the space of the 
the old transaction in the space in general is it for exportation is free tax very good so that that is it it's like a, an industrial part where uh, some companies some uh, factories or some businesses they are free of taxes so they will be able to uh, to attract other countries to have their uh, their businesses there actually we have here in el salvador also that one that is one, one of the most popular things and uh, why we have a lot of factories right so that agreed is agreed or oh, how other one which one okay. Mm, similar as one? Uh, no, that is like the free parks. You know, like mm. factories that they are able to, for example, uh, they, the most common in El Salvador is that they bring the clothes from other country, they ensemble here, and they send to other countries to, to be delivered and distributed. And the good send thing the is that... Send yeah. the clothes. So the good thing is that they do not pay taxes or they pay, they pay less taxes than other industries, so something like that. Teacher, teacher an, example, an example here is Zona Franca San Bartolo. Yeah, some like that is it. So there are some factories, they do their thing and the government, uh, what they do is to attract this kind of businesses, they say, okay, no taxes for you, you just, uh, get some employment to people. We're going to help you. It's going to be easy for you to import and export things. So that is what they do. Good. In the park. Okay, good. I remember that many years ago, I don't know if actually he's at the airport. We, can, guess, buy, uh -huh. we can buy something uh, taxes free. That what is true. Mean? Yeah, that is true. Uh, the most of the things at the airport actually are very expensive, but there are some things, some particular things, because they are part of the airport and you can you can buy them only there. Or the, it's, it's going to be like that. So it's it's like that, and it's not only here, but in in all the airports in the world, they they try to do something like that. Good, my friends. Good, good. So let's see. We have time for a little bit more. Let me check. Yeah, this is for the next. Okay. So we're going to continue with the book. Uh, where is the book? It's here, okay. So this is a little grammar. Uh, it's kind of easy, it's not complicated. How to use clauses with when and if to express future conditions. So we're going to use when and if for future conditional. Remember that a conditional is a cause and effect, right? Uh, let's see, um, Pamela, no, she's not here, I guess. I can see that it's not here. Jancy, hello. Hello. Uh, could you please read uh, this part? Yes, uh, first. Yeah, uh, all, all the things, please. Clauses, when, if, yes. Please. Okay. Uh, how to use clauses with when and if to express Future condition. Clauses with when or if describe what you think you will do or what will happen in a specific situation in the future. When there are inaccurate process orders, customer satisfaction will be from compromised or customer satisfaction will be compromised when there are inaccurate process order. If there is a lack of communication between employees, productivity will, will decrease or <clears throat> productivity will decrease, decrease if there is a lack of communication between employees. Notice that when, if clause, if expressed to present tense and the independent clauses express future tense will be will, with will. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Pamela. So this is the little grammar. It's very, very easy. Remember that a clause is when we have two ideas, all right? Two ideas in the same um, line in the same sentence. Uh, in this case, we can use when or we can use if. 
So to describe what you think you will do or what will happen in a specific situation in the future. So the first example is kind of easy. And you can see that you can do this in both ways. So you can start with one clause or you can uh, move the clauses, the order clauses. But it's very important one thing, okay, the comma. So if we start the, um, the clause with um, the conditional, then we have to separate them with a comma. If we start the clause with the effect, then there is no comma. So that is very important, very, very important. For example, when there are inaccurate purchase orders, comma, look at that, customer satisfaction will be compromised. So the first one is the cause, when there are inaccurate purchase orders, and that is in present also. Customer satisfaction will be compromised. That is the effect. And that is with future, with will in this case. Or we can, we can change the clauses on position. We can say customer's satisfaction will be compromised when there are inaccurate purchase order. So in this case, we do not separate the clause with a comma. So it's very important, the order of the clause. Remember this, when the first part of the clause is the, the cows, then we separate them with a comma. When the first part of the clause is the future, I mean the, the effect, then we do not use a comma. So let's check the other, the other example. If there is a lack of communication between employees, comma, productivity will decrease or we can change the order. Productivity will decrease if there is a lack of communication between employees. No comma needed here. So it says, notice that the when if clause is expressed in present tense, I will we say that, and the independent clause expresses future tense with will. So that is the only thing that you need to remember, okay? That depending on the order, you are going to use a comma or you are not going to use a comma. The rest of it is going to be very easy. Also remember that the cows, the first part, the cows is going to be in present and the effect is going to be in future. So only two things to remember. So the question is, do you have any questions? No questions. Mm, that's very good. Excuse me. Uh -huh. uh, I, I I use will when is possible in the future. Mm, this is not like it's possible or it's not possible. This is a very simple clause. Is when you say something that is happening right now and it's going to have an effect in the future. So we mm -hmm. always are going to use will in this situation. I know that there are other clauses that depends or if it's not true. Or, I mean, like when we say, um, if I get the lottery, I, I would, or I will do something else, but that is a different type, type of clause. By now, we just check that we're going to have the present and the future. And the order is the important if we are going to use the comma. So only that. All right, all right, okay. Perfect, very good. Any other question? Okay, so let's check some vocabulary. Inaccurate, what is to be or to have something inaccurate? Um, it doesn't exact. It's not exact, it's not precise. Very good. And mm. let's see, there was another one, compromise. Um, yeah, compromise. I believe that you know what is to be compromised. What is to be compromised? It's like promise, I don't know. If you 
Compromise. Yeah, yeah compromise. It's like we can effect say effect or affect. Okay. okay. It's like at risk. Risk. We are, okay. Yeah. We are risking the customer satisfaction here. So it's compromise. Good. Uh, let's see if there is any other decrease. You know that, of course, lack of, yeah, there is no other. Okay, if there is no questions, we're gonna go to the exercise below. It says, rewrite the sentences below to make statements using clauses with when and if, expressing future. Modify the verbs when necessary. Check the answers with a classmate. Well, we're going to do it together. So number one is already done, I guess. Uh, or it's not, yeah, they're separated. The organization of the dog is bad. Time is wasted over unnecessary tasks. How is going to be this one? When the organization of the dog is bad, Good. Time will be wasted over unnecessary tasks. Perfect. That is it. So when the organization of the dog is bad, comma, we cannot forget the comma, time will be wasted over unnecessary tasks. Very good. Perfect. What is tasks, everybody? Activities, teacher. Very good, like different activities that we do. In this case, unnecessary tasks is because uh, if the organization is not good, you do more tasks and you waste more time. So that is it. And wasted, teacher, wasted, wasted. Wasted, anybody, what is wasted? It's expensive. It's more expensive, it's when something, uh, uh, go ahead. The expensive, but doesn't uh, benefit. Yes. Okay. You lost, you lost your time in, the, in, the, in this case of this sentence. Okay. Yeah, in this case, when we say time is wasted, it means that the, the time was not invested in something that was productive. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes also yeah. wasted, it means that you, the resources, uh, are wasted, so that means that you you lost some resources that you didn't use the resources properly. Something like that. Good. Okay, number two says the financial yeah. department sends in. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, teacher. I, I, I see. Yeah. The organization of the ducks is bad. <clears throat> Comma. In, in, it's necessary to modify the popular there in this case. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because yeah. you have a comma. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Good. Thank you. So, number two says the financial department sends inaccurate reports. Money is lost. So, how is going to be this one? Hello. The financial department sending correct reports, comma. Mm -hmm. And after that? Money is last step. Well, that is going to change. So remember that we're going to use in this case, if, if the financial department sends Inaccurate reports, comma, money will be lost because we're going to use will in that part, will be lost. So it's a uh, cause and effect. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we need to modify that one. So it's going to be the final, if the financial department sends inaccurate reports, comma, money will be lost. Good. So number is is, uh -huh. is a condition. It's like a condition, yeah. 
So if this happens, the other thing is going to happen. So it's cause and effect. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good. So the number three, it says the warehouse space is limited. There is this organization. So how is it going to be? When the warehouse pay is limited, comma, there will be a disorganization. Very good, perfect. Uh, when the warehouse space is limited, comma, there will be disorganization. Also yes. remember that you can use it uh, the other way. You can say there will be disorganization if the warehouse space is limited or when the mm. warehouse space is limited. Okay. In that case, no comma, right? If okay. we just change it, it's possible as well. Okay. All, all, all will be in Mantei is. In this case, no, we don't we don't keep is. So it's going to be like there, uh, there will be, there will ah. be this organization because B is the verb to be, right? Okay, okay. Very good. This is very similar to the passive voice. Did you check the passive voice already? Mm, yes, remember. Okay, good. Yeah, it's something like that. It's, it's not that big deal. Okay, number four, it says, the employees open boxes and count items. Time is wasted. So how is going to be this one? Hello. It will be the same idea. When employees open boxes and come in items, time will be wasted. Very good. That is it. It's going to be very easy, yeah. as you can see. Yeah. When the employees open boxes and count items, comma, time will be wasted. That is it. And if it's the other way, it's going to be time will be wasted if the employees or when the employees open boxes and count items. So that is it, it's kind of simple. Let's check the last one. It says uh, there is lack of communication between employees. The time to fulfill orders increases. The lack of communication between employees, comma, the time to will be fully not. I don't know. I confuse. Okay. The first part is good. If there is lack of communication between employees, comma, and the rest. The time to fill will order increase. Will increase. Will increase. Yeah. We've increased, yes. Mm -hmm. That is it. So it's going to be at the end, uh, if there is lack of communication mm -hmm. between employees, mm -hmm. comma, mm -hmm. the time to fulfill orders, orders will, will increase. increase. Mm -hmm. That will be it. very good. Any questions with this little grammar? Okay, so we're not gonna check this one, but uh, before we move on, we're going to check the attendance. So we're going to do our little pause. Let's see. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. I'm here, teacher. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. 
Ophelia Ori Jana Arce. Good. teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present. Good. Present teacher. Nice. <coughs> Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Present. Good. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Sánchez. Present teacher. Okay, good. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Sánchez Ramírez. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Very good. So we are going to continue. We are going to also take some videos. Those are very short. Uh, and then we're going to continue with the book so we can finish today the unit number three. Um, okay, this is very, very short video. Uh, of course, as usual, we're going to check the video and then provide opinions and comments. So here we go. Hi, this is James from Fishbowl. This is Whiteboard Wednesday. Today we are going to talk about what are common inventory problems. There are way too many to list, but let's just go over a couple that are very common. Uh, we've got old products sitting on the shelf, whether we're just not using it, it's not shipping out often enough, or we've forgotten about it, it's expired, etc. We have number discrepancies between what's in our book or abacus compared to what's on our shelves. Uh, very big problem, very common, so don't feel alone. Improper log, meaning we're not putting in the in, uh, information that we have about our inventory into that spreadsheet, into our computer, whatever we're using to track all of those things and our processes. Uh, no one knows, man, this is way too common. You may have a grasp of what's happening in your company, but if your employees don't know where products are, how much they have, how much they're supposed to be coming in, that is a very real problem. Too much stuff. This is kind of similar. All these are kind of very linked together. Oftentimes companies think they need all these products, all these goods, and they don't know what they're ordering. They don't know how much they have on hand at that very moment, or they just keep ordering it thinking eventually it'll sell. You better have a strategy as to what you're trying to do with all that stuff. Uh, or they over skew. This is something where you have maybe one, two products sitting on the shelf with a whole host of numbers and SKUs to incorrectly scan in right next to it. Make sure your stuff's organized. Now with all these, you can really get into some details and you should dig into why this may be the case. But the first thing you should probably do is address what is your process. Understand your process behind each one of these. So if you're having discrepancies in your inventory, for example, you should definitely understand is there improper scrapping going on? Are we not receiving enough of an order from a supplier? Are we not shipping out what we've put in our books? If you don't know what's coming in and going out on a day-to-day -day basis, there's a very real problem that needs to be addressed and it can be done, but you have to start by knowing what is the process behind the problem that you are having at that moment. So just a few of the problems that you may face and if it's something where you need automated software solutions, feel free to check out Fishbowl. Lots of features that cover all of these dilemmas um, and we'll make sure to keep addressing more of these things. That's this Whiteboard Wednesday, see you next time. Okay, what did you get from the video? Anybody? He, he explains about the problem more common um, related to the inventory. Good. Mm.
Yeah, actually, this is something that we checked already, but uh, he was explaining in a different way, right? Yeah, he explained with the graphical, let me say. The... Yeah, the little drawings. That's... Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. And actually, these are very common, the problems that we checked in the home. So, for example, too much stuff, too many products, too, too many goods finished. So you don't know what to do with them. So that is a very common problem. Problem, right? We discussed that already. Any other opinion on the video? Yeah. He explained the process, teacher. Well, actually, uh, at the end, yes, he says that it doesn't matter what the problem is. Uh, you need to understand what is your process. So because maybe the problems are common, but your um, company, your system, your strategies are different. So you need to go and understand your process. So you identify and improve these kind of situations. So that's what very, very interesting. Let's check the other video. Also very short, here we go. What did you get into this video? The video show uh, with the maxima maximis space. Very good. Actually, that is true. I mean, how to maximize your space and get your shelves or the uh, the places where you put your inventory better, right? So good. Any other? He advises about the different way to uh, organization or classification the, the product in the warehouse. Very good. Yeah, that is also very good. The way that you are going to handle everything to the warehouse. Good. Um, any other? Okay, so let's move to the last video. This is also very short as I remember. Okay, so here we go. Sequin Consumer Products is probably a brand name that a lot of people don't know. You probably know us better by our brand names that we sell to retail. Reese Hitches, Reese Towing Products, Highland Cargo Management and Tie Down Products. That's who we sell. Sequent recently worked with Associated, a provider of integrated supply chain solutions to analyze their distribution operations. Their goal was to uncover opportunities to optimize their warehouse in South Bend, Indiana. As a result of their engineering and design study, Associated provided Sequent with alternatives that would result in improved efficiencies and reduced operating costs. Based on these recommendations, Sequent opted to reconfigure their storage layout adjust their fleet mix, and reduce process bottlenecks through the use of automation to optimize their fulfillment operation. We had a feeling that the fleet makeup would change, uh, but when we sat down with the engineering team and laid out for them where our primary pick faces were, uh, we changed the composition 
uh, primarily away from order pickers to single walkie riders. We had noticed that uh, we were spending too much time in the air picking, so we moved everything to the floor for pick face. Obviously, a single walkie is a less expensive piece of equipment to acquire than a, a man up order picker is. Uh, it also tends to be faster and there's less safety concerns operating with that piece of equipment. So there were some big changes there. Um, but we also uh, have a lot of double deep high storage in this building and uh, the, the Raymond Double Deep Reach just is a really superior product for us, especially with the cameras and especially with the, um, the laser beam sight indicators for the, for the operators. We ended up with a fleet of 29 lifts and it was a mixture of, of different products, single walkies, double walkies, order pickers, double deep reach trucks, uh, three wheel, forklifts, and an internal combustion truck. In addition to the process enhancement solutions, Associated recommended fleet management to further improve their truck and operator performance. The fleet is now equipped with the industry's most advanced fleet optimization tool, Raymond's iWarehouse. This system allows Sequin to operate with greater effectiveness and cost efficiency by providing them with real-time visibility to numerous data points. They can now evaluate and immediately act upon information that directly results in operational and bottom line improvements. Given Sequin's focus on sustainability, they also chose to employ opportunity charging for lift truck batteries, replacing a former battery charging system. Certainly in any warehouse operation, battery charging and changing is a big concern. Um, you have the safety concern of maintaining a battery room, of potential spills, of potential dropping a battery, of damaging a battery coming in or out of a piece of equipment, and just the floor space that a battery room ties up, plus the cost of the batteries. So with using the opportunity charging, every truck has one battery in it. Uh, we charge at uh, lunch times and we charge between shifts, but uh, we've not had to change a battery here since early 2010. Another major solution provided by Associated is an extendable conveying system that allows Sequin to save additional labor costs by improving the efficiency in the unloading of import containers in receiving. We spend a lot of time with labor inside of those containers. At certain times of the year that's not so horrible, but when it's extremely hot out or extremely cold out, it really becomes a, a quality of life issue for our people. Plus, we need to turn those containers relatively quickly. So uh, the Associated Engineering team put together a powered receiving conveyor solution for us that we installed this year. And we've noticed uh, about a 30% decrease in unloading time, both in labor and in time in the door for a hand unloaded container. The results of the integrated solutions Associated provided have helped Sequin to optimize their storage and order fulfillment operations. Our first year payback was in the tens of thousands of dollars, and that's a composition of between lease, uh, ongoing maintenance for the equipment, and charging for the equipment. So we've, we've experienced a very nice savings. The folks from Associated have been a really good team to work with. Uh, they really listen a lot to us. They bring in innovative solutions. Uh, they take us out on field trips. Uh, they really just spend time working with us to make sure that we're happy and that we're um, listened to. Okay, what did you get from this one? Nothing, teach. No way. Is it because it's <laughs> Friday and we want to sleep? And <laughs> I like the way that the convoy built. Convoy built? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's convoy built through the, through the truck. That's very nice, right? Oh, it was amazing. Oh my God. It was a transformer. Yes, yes it was amazing that 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 way. Also the 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 battery charge for the uh four leaf, four leaf. Mm -hmm. The four leaf, yes. I like it. Yeah, very convenient, right? I mean yes. as you can see, there are different kinds of vehicles with different kinds of uh, things that can help you manage the whole inventory. And also I was uh, checking out, uh, well, something I really like is that they say that they charge it uh, at lunchtime. So they yes. put it on charge, they go to lunch. In that way, they, I mean, that is part of logistics as well, the, the way that they are going to do things like that. So we're going to save time and money. That's very good. Yes, because now in the middle of the work, the, 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 the work leaf, Oh, no, I, oh my God, I forgot. <laughs> Montecarga. 
for lick, for lick, yeah, for lick, yes. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't out of order. I like it. I like it. Very good, perfect. Any other opinion? Any other comment? Nothing else. Everybody wants to go to bed right now. But it's no time yet. We're going to continue with the book. So uh, it says, I will be able to provide safety measures related to different processes at the warehouse. So what, do you, uh, what are safety measures? What do you understand on that? Uh -huh. The safety measures are the 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 measures that <laughs> that all the companies also at the warehouse have to have to use the employees. For example, the helmet, the the death, oh my God, how do you say cuerda de vida? Oh my God, I forget. <laughs> but uh, the, bo the, mm, the bucket boots. Okay. Yeah. Um, the anti-reflective, um, how do you say? <laughs> Chaleco, oh my God, I forgot the word. <laughs> uh, but that is, uh -huh. that's measures that help uh, to avoid uh, accidents. Very good. So those are tasks or strategies for you to to keep all the people safe, right? So that is it. And in number one, it says hazardous materials and machinery are always found in a warehouse. Hazardous. What is that word? Do you know? What is hazardous? Anybody knows? Oh, yes, it's, it's, it's dangerous. That is it, dangerous. Yeah, there are, there are, I, I remember some uh, signals, electric hazards, something like that. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. is. So that is the good thing about this kind of uh, vocabulary that we're learning. So there are many ways to say something, right? So you can say dangerous. Suddenly, you can say, and uh -huh. suddenly when you are walking and and you see the the sign of, for example, stop. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah. true. Uh -huh. Warning. Yeah, of, I remember. Yeah. yeah. Fire. And there are many exit. Uh, there are many, many signals. Actually, that is one of the measures in safety, right? To have a lot of signals across the warehouse so you know if something is dangerous, if, if you need to go out from this, uh, this side or anything like that. Even on the floor, right? On the floor, you're going to find arrows and some, uh, some signals for you to stop or that you cannot go into a, a, an area. Things like that are also measures. Okay, and it says, how do you keep your employees out of dangers? How do you do that one? Uh -huh. So keep the employees necessary to uh, signal in each place, place uh, the material, uh, how, how sell roads. Uh, dangerous extinguish extinguish use of extinguish that, that is true good huh is that perfect so yeah actually we need to for first of all have signals we can train people right we can tell them this is dangerous be careful be careful zulma you uh, i think it's necessary uh, 
create a manual or procedure in case of whatever a situation doing that company, for example, if a uh, uh, incendio, como se dice? Fire. Yes, if there are a fire, the employees need to know how do you go out of uh, the warehouse very good perfect so that is very important the processes and manual so you or, or people understand what they need to do at a certain situation somebody else also has an opinion anybody else's yes it's important the implementation of prevent measure related to the the or with with the uh, goal is keep your keep the employees the security of the employees integrity of the employees too yes yeah. and different measure the um, it, it, it's important and the the how do you say policies related to the, uh, how you say, conscient to the personal about the, the uh, their self security is right, is su propia seguridad. Their own security. Own security, yeah. Security. Is is part of OHS stand for occupational health and safety. That is true. Actually, that is something that the government requires, right? To industries and factories and things like that. So very good. Yeah, this is one of the most important things. Uh, and of course, we know a little bit about that one. We need to train people, we need to. I mean, even when they know every six months, at least every year, they have to have a training about any kind of situation like earthquakes, fire, what you're going to do. So then it says, what kind of dangerous materials and chemicals may be found in a warehouse? What do you think? Gasoline. Gasoline, good. Thinner, things like yeah. that one. Right? Thinner, thinner, thinner. Alcohol, alcohol, yeah. Uh, and raw, mater raw material. Yeah, sometimes the raw materials might be dangerous, right? Yeah. How do you say inflammable? Flammable. Flammable or burn. Uh -huh. So is, that, is, that is also very dangerous and some uh, well, you have to put some signals on those as well. Right? Be dangerous. Don't touch. Don't drink this. I don't know. Many things that might be happening. Okay, we're going to read this little paragraph. Uh, let's see. Uh, there is more to a warehouse safety than obedience to fire codes and safety. Okay, let's check. Um, who wants to read the paragraph? Let's see. A volunteer. Me? Okay, Sorry. go ahead. This is more. Hmm? This is more to warehouse safety than obedience to fire codes and safety regulation. Unfortunate to many warehouse and TPLs look at safety as many the minimum structure by the law or the conscience in the long run. However, in safe warehouse environment delivers import costs savings through high, higher employee satisfaction and increased productivity. Power of workplace dis, disruption and reduce unsustained and acumen don't time. Okay, let's read the other as well, please. Only the other one. Okay. 
So I'm gonna read, don't worry. So it says there is more to warehouse safety than obedience to fire codes and safety regulations. So it's not only that you see a, a signal and you say, uh, I need to do this or anything like that. So it says, unfortunately, too many warehouse and 3PLs look at safety as meeting the minimum struck by the law or their conscience. Uh, so yeah, I guess maybe not for all the companies, but some companies, they they just do the minimal, right? So we're going to put some signals, we're going to train people once a year and that's it. But sometimes we need more, depending on the industry, depending on what kind of situation you are handling. In the long run, what is that? What expresses that phrase? What do you understand if I say, in the long run, what it might be? Anybody? During the time? Throughout the time, very good. So in the long term, right? However, a safe warehouse environment delivers important cost savings too. So this is very important. So some companies, they believe that if you train people and invest money in this kind of uh, security, it's a waste of money, but actually not. Because what it says here, uh, it says higher employee satisfaction. So if you see that your company is taking care of you, you're happy there. I know, you know, that may, might be dangerous, but you see that they are taking care of you. So that is good. And increased productivity, definitely. So if you feel safe, you are going to work at a fast pace. Fewer work, uh, workplace disruptions. So every time that there is an accident or something is going on, you need to stop production, right? So if you have a very nice system of safety, then you don't have any many disruptions in the workplace, good. And reduce absenteeism and equipment downtime. So let's check about absenteeism. What is that? What is absenteeism? Don't attend your work. That is it. When you don't go to your job, right? When you call and you say, Hey, boss, I'm sick. I cannot go to my job today. So that is absenteeism. And then it says an equipment downtown, uh, downtime, I'm sorry. What is downtime? What is that? When some, some quick equipment is... Oh my God, it doesn't function for a long time. That is it. When a piece of equipment is not working, right? And you have to send the mechanic, the engineer, and check what is going on. But then, I mean, you are going to be stopped there uh, in the procedure. So if you keep a good maintenance and security, everything will be working fine. Let's see um, who hasn't read the check. Carla, could you please continue reading? What line, teacher? Don't expect, please. Don't expect employees to start with a culture of safety at work. Establishing a safety culture, including the necessary operational change and training and education programs start with you. The following are some measures Make sure you call and start implementing, implementing with your team. A, make sure that garbage and debris bins are available through, throughout the warehouse. B, block access to expose or open loading doors. C, key. Isolate and passenger passenger ways clear at all times. D keep your back straight, don't bend over. E teach employee to push manual material handling equipment whenever possible 
rather than pulse love. F, test the love before lifting, lifting it. If, if it is too heavy or bulky, get help. G, keep dogs in floor free of boxes, garbage boxes, piling materials, debris, debris, beer and oil. H, permit access to a bulk floor, racks and shelves only if portable ladders or a appropriate lifting device are available. Very good, perfect. So let's check into this one. It says, don't expect employees to start with a culture of safety at work. So that is true. We cannot trust that everybody is going to be careful. So establishing a safety culture, including the necessary operational changes. So sometimes we need to change something in the processes, right? We, the, the leaders are the ones who will be able to check into that one. Uh, and training and education program starts with you. So the company is the one that is going to invest in that one and be sure that nobody is going to get hurt or uh, is going to get sick because of anything that is happening at work. So for example, the people, you know, the people that they lift a lot of heavy things in the warehouse, sometimes they use uh, some um pieces of cloth that are going to be very tight so they cannot have any damage and uh, i mean many things might be happening many things so it says the following are some measures you could start implementing with your team letter a make sure that garbage and debris bins are available throughout the warehouse uh, debris bins what is that You can look on internet if you want. So what is Debris Wins? Oh, the reminds of something when it's broken. Okay, very oh. good. So, so that happens sometimes, right? But you have to be available, uh, be aware that those have to be available throughout the warehouse. So that is important, good. Let it be says block access to exposed or open loading dock doors. So that is also important. You need to be sure that the doors are open. I mean, and that if nobody has to go there, you have to block the passage so nobody goes there. That is very important. Um, we checked yesterday what was dock. Uh, let us see. Keep ales. Remember that the pronunciation of this word is ales. Okay. Keep ales and passageways clear at all times. What is a passageway? Anybody knows? The passageway is the. Oh my God, the passage. How can I explain? I don't know. How can I explain? <laughs> no. Security? Uh, it's not about, well, it's about security, but it's not like that. So passageway is like a corridor or a way. Spy, spy, spy reduce? It could be reduced or it could be wide. But yeah, it's like where you walk uh, or where you are going to go uh, enters to some other places. So. That has to be clear. Something person, something person, identify. And no, it's like the mm. place, the place on the warehouse where you walk and you enter or get out from places. So, for example, the emergency exits, ah, they, okay. they have to be clear at all times because ah, in, in an emergency. I have a clear, I have a clear guy in passage place. Okay, very good. So yeah, let's, uh -huh. an, ac an accident occurs at the warehouse many five years ago. There are many boxes in the passageways, and the, when the first person arrives at the at the warehouse, she has to turn off the light. But the boxes in uh, are uh, the boxes. Uh, 
tools. The pathway uh, was a lot of boxes and she fell down and she broke her uh, arm. A mine. Yeah. That's not yeah. good. Yeah, and it was it was so uh, so difficult. Yeah, because she was incapacitated about six months. Yeah, that is something that had takes a long time, and also you need to fill some papers because the accident was at, at work, right? So, and uh, you need to replace the person uh, that is doing their job. I mean, the impact for the company is not good, and also. The person that got damaged, I mean, you feel bad about people that. Also, I don't know that uh, uh, two or three months ago, we received a, a capacitation about a risk and accidents. And I don't know, or no, I never had a, a hair about that there are, um, uh, me, how do you say, medida, measures, measures, measures. Medida, yeah, measures to, uh, to design the steps, uh, escaleras, stairways. The stairways, uh -huh. Yeah, there are measures to, to do, to, to, to create the steps ways with a, Oh, and I say, what? <laughs> it's amazing it, for security. Yeah, they, they really take this uh, like a serious thing because, yes, I mean, this, this situation was very bad, but in mind, somebody could die. I remember that at the factory where I was working before, they, there were some machines for, uh, for uh, what the machines, what they did is to put the, the uh, the brand of the company that in the shirts and things like that were, but it was burnt i mean it was a machine that puts that one with a heat it was a heat sealer so one guy was speaking with another person and he the machine puts in, in, in the finger and he lost his finger so that was not good right that was not good at all so many things might be happening so that's why this is very very important right okay so the next one it says uh keep your back straight down bend over what is bend over anybody knows no. Okay, bent over is when you, how can I say, when you are like that, when you move your back to the front and you are like, like in a bad position. So your back has to be straight. So that is bent over. So please don't bend over. And then it says, teach employees to push manual material handling equipment whenever possible, rather than that pull load. So that means that they need to, uh, avoid do a lot of efforts. If they have machines, they have to do, do it with the, with the equipment. It's better to use the equipment. That's why we have the equipment. So we need to teach everybody to use that. And then it says, test the loads before lifting it. If it's too heavy or bulk, get help. I mean, that is also a good thing. I mean, it's better to use the equipment. But if you don't have the equipment, just check if is if you can do it without getting hurt. Letter G says keep docks and floors free of boxes. So this is very similar to the passion ways. So garbage boxes, bailing materials, debris, dirt, and oil. So in the whenever in the places in the aisles in the passion ways, whenever the people are walking. It has to be clear of anything. It doesn't have to be anything on there because that can cause problems. They can cause injuries to people. Yes, another time in, uh, a partner was uh, running. I think, yeah, he won, but there was a, a special material to package boxes with a machine. 
and uh, it was, how can I say, liso. Uh, slippery. Oh, yeah. He slipped and he broke the, the, the door, the glass door with her body, with his body. My. <laughs> yeah, he could the, her his hand. Yeah, that's not good. So yeah, I mean anything may cause an accident. So that's why we need to be careful. The problem is that people, when they are working, they don't think about that one. They say, I'm going to put this here and I will continue working because it's easier or it's faster. But I mean, yes, we need things to be very fast but not dangerous, definitely. So that is not something that we don't need. Uh, so and letter H says permit access to above floor racks and shelves only if portable ladders or appropriate lifting devices are available. Uh, ladder, what is a ladder? Like a, a bell to, to climb in. Very good to climb. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's something that you put it on the wall and you climb, the right? So yes. to mm -hmm. reach the upper level. Good, perfect. We are going to move to, uh, let me see. It says classify the security measures above in the categories from the box below. Mm, this is a good exercise. Let's do it. So we have a general housekeeping false and other preventable mishaps, manual lifting or four lifts and material handling equipment. So there are four categories. General housekeeping is like order and organization in the warehouse. False or other preventable mishap is to avoid that somebody falls or has a problem on the floor. Manual lifting means that and we need to be careful on the way that we lift heavy materials. For this and material handling equipment, it means that we need to be careful on the, the way that we handle, that we manage the equipment. So these are the four categories. So I'm going to ask you letter by letter and you tell me which one is going to be. So letter A says, make sure that the garbage and debris bins are available throughout the warehouse. So which one is this? General. Housekeeping. General housekeeping. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Let it be block access to expose or open loading dock doors. What can this be? False, another preventable mishap. False and other yeah, it could be that because if we have boxes and things like that, it would be that. Let us see, keep ALs and passageways clear at all times. Okay. False. False. Very good. False and other preventable mishaps. So the next one says, keep your back straight, don't bend over. General. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, general housekeeping. General housekeeping, good. Uh, the next one says letter E, teach employees to push manual material handling equipment whenever possible rather than pull loads. Manual lifting. Manual lifting, yeah, good. Uh -huh. Test the load before lifting it. It is If it is too heavy or bulky, get help. Uh, and the last four lifts and material handling? I believe this is more for manual lifting. Manual lifting, yeah. Good. Letter G, keep docks and floors free of boxes, garbage, boxes, bailing materials, diverse dirt, and oil. Ports? General housekeeping. General, it could be general housekeeping, yeah. 
that's good. And the last one, permit access to above floor racks and shelves only if portable ladders or appropriate lifting devices are available. Manual lifts, lift. Manual lifting. Mm, I guess this is not the car one. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What it could be? False. False. It could be false. Yeah, yeah. And also, it can be four lifts of material handling equipment. So, anything like that. Good, perfect. So, let's move on. We have a lot of vocabulary, right? Okay, we have a um, conversation about inventory. It says, I will be able to explain the relevance of an effective inventory management. So, number one, it says, uh, does your company handle items with expiration dates? Uh -huh. For everybody. In our case, not, not an expiration date, but an ideal uh, rotation date. Okay, that is good, interesting. Yeah, and well, because I believe it, because it's technology, technology, okay. technology change. That is true. Yeah, we need moment. to move on. So you use the FIFO, I guess, the first yes. thing, for example. Yes. Good. Okay, and the other question is what happens to products that go out of season or become irrelevant in the market? Mm, that is a very good question. It will be obsolete. It will be obsolete. Yeah, yes, yes. and you won't be able to sell it, right? Yes, yes. the lost the, the lost price because the demand is less. So, Neil. Very good. Yes. That is it. Hmm? Yeah, because suddenly appears another product uh, with a cost uh, much lower in the best quality. And uh, the other that I have many months ago is, was expensive or is expensive and uh, doesn't have uh, good uh, character characteristics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is it. I mean, sometimes what companies generally do is they say, we're going to put this with a and a special pricing, right? So it, it sells, it goes away. So that happens everywhere, even in the supermarket. I mean, when there are some bargains, when there are some offers, of course, what you need to do is to check the expiration date, right? Because- It happens with shoes. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah, I love, I like, uh, now I like one and then the likes, the ones that I like, uh, they doesn't, Oh my God, how can I say? Uh, pass, uh, pass on the more. I don't know. Yeah, it was out of fashion. Yeah, uh, yeah out of fashion, yes. It <laughs> yeah, that happens. I mean, uh, there are many things that happen. Actually, you know, the industry is very interesting because this is the reason actually why exists the Black Friday, right? The Black Friday is when... Uh, the companies, they want to sell all products and those are the ones that have special pricing uh, because for Christmas, they are going to present new products. So that's how companies started creating this kind of crazy things. And I mean, now it's, it's very popular. Imagine with the, with the phones, the iPhone 10, the iPhone 11. <laughs> My God, yes. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. That's true. Yes. Okay, let's check the conversation here. It says, Sarah is asking Ramon some tips on the basics of inventory control. Read the conversation and take turns practicing with a partner. I'm going to read it just for you to check the pronunciation. Please pay attention on pronunciation. It says, how does inventory management work, Ramon? You need to have enough products in your inventory to sell to your customers when you want it. But you don't want to have too much in your inventory 
or you will be paying a lot of money to have it stored. Oh, well, I was thinking of investing in some new cases for the L Phone X. Don't do it. Now that the L Phone X is on the stores, you will not sell much. That's one of the problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you thought you could sell more than you did, and there is a change in the market, you might end up paying for products you can sell. Very interesting. So we are going to practice the conversation, my friends. Here we go. Let's see. Rose and sell me. Okay, sell me. I start. Thank you. Thank okay. you. How does it, how does it, how does inventory management work, Ramon? You need to have enough product in your inventory to sell to your customers when they want it. But you don't want to have too much in your inventory or you will be paying a lot of money to have in the start. Oh, well, I was thinking of investing in some new cases for the Yale phone X. Don't do it. Now that the iPhone X is on the store, you will not sell much. That's one of that's one of the problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you thought you could sell more than you did, and there is change in the market, you might and might might. Might and uh, up paying your product, you can you can sell. Very good, perfect. Thank you. Now, Osmin and Carla. Right. Yes. You, okay. Carla. Yes. Okay. How does inventory management work, Ramon? You need to have enough product in your inventory to sell to your customer when they want it, but you don't want to have to match in your inventory or you will be paying a lot of money to have it started. Oh, well, I was thinking of investing in some new cases for the Elphone X. Don't do it. Now that the Elphone X is on the store, you will not sell much. That's one of the problem with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you so you could sell more than you do, and there is change in the market, you might end in paying for product you can't sell. Very good, perfect. Now, Sandra and Ophelia. Okay. Start open. Sit. Yes. Ophelia, you go first. Okay. I hold us inventory money. I bought Ramon. You need to have enough products in your inventory to sell to your customer when they want it, but you do want to have too much in your inventory, or you will be paying a lot of money to have it stored. Oh, well, I was, I think, was investing in something I need cast for the L phone X. Don't do it now that the L phone X is on stores, you will not sell much. That's one of the problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you told to call sell more than you did. And there is change in the market. You might in the up paging for products you can sell. Very good. Now, Floor and uh, Nelson. Okay. 
Ok. How does oh. inventory management, management for Ramon? You need to have enough <laughs> products in your inventory to serve to your customer when when they want it, but you don't want you don't want to have too much in your inventory or you will be paying a lot of money to have a store. Oh, well, I was thinking of investing in some new case for the L phone X. Don't, don't do it. Now that the L phone X is on storage, you will not sell much. That's one of the problem with inventory management, management when you have too much inventory because you don't, you could sell more than you did. And there is change in the market that you, you mean, you may, and you may and up paying for products you can't sell. Very good, perfect. Now, Pamela and Jancy. Okay. Pamela? Yes, uh, how does investment management work, Ramon? You need to have enough product in your inventory to sell to your customer when they, when, when it, but you don't want to have too much in your inventory <laughs> or you will be paying a lot of money to have a story. Oh, well, it was thinking of investing in some new cases for the iPhone X. Don't do, do it. Now that the iPhone X is on story, you will not sell more. That's one of the problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because, because you thought you could sell more than you did, and there is change in the market, you might end up paying for products you can sell. Very good, perfect. Now, Zulma and Sandra. Okay. Okay. How does inventory management score, Ramon? You need to have enough products in your inventory to sell to your customer when they want, want it. But you don't want to have too much in inventory or you will or you will be paying a lot of money to have in it stored. Oh, well, it's because thinking on investing in someone new case for the L phone X. Don't do it. No, now that the L phone X is on a store, you will not sell much. That's one of the problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you throw you could sell more than than you did, and there is a change in the market, you made an up paying for products you can sell. Good, perfect. Now Ricardo and Lourdes. Okay. I am Sara. How does inventory man management work, Ramon? You need to have enough products in your inventory to say to you customer when they want it, but you don't want to have too much in your inventory or you will be paying, paying a lot of money to have this store storing. Or oh, well, I was thinking of invest of investing in some new cases for the L phone X. Don't know, 
it know that the elfon is on a store you will not see much that one of the problem which inventory manager 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 when you have too much inventory because you uh it's out uh, so you could sell more than you did and there is a change in the market you meet and it's buying for products you can't sell thank you perfect very good let me just check what will be the exercise below uh, okay why is it important to have enough products in your inventory according to the conversation of course Uh-huh. Why is it important to have enough products in your inventory? For sell your, your customer. Very good, to sell to your customers the products. Good, number two says, uh, is it a good idea to have an excess of inventory? No. Of course it's not, right? We have checked into that one a long time. And number three says, what happens if you have too much inventory and market trends suddenly change? You increase your cost of the store. Very good, perfect. You increase the cost of the storage and sometimes you cannot sell the products. My friends, so um, we're gonna finish the class. Is there any question before we finish? Oh, it's clear. Very good. So remember, next week we are on vacation. All the week, no English class. So um, the other week is the last week. So it's going to be the return. Please enjoy the vacation. Also, please be careful. Sleep very well. Rest. And um, tell me your plans on the next Monday when we come back. I want to know what you did in English, of course. And I'm going to check the attendance, of course. Let's see. Uh, Nelson, can you uh, stay today to, uh, for the 101? Yes, teacher. Good, perfect. Today, no problem. So, Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present, teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present, teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Present, good night. Good night. Uh, Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. I'm here. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher, good night. Good night. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening. Good evening, good night. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Okay. Present teacher. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Shansi Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present, teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good, perfect. So, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you today. Enjoy your vacations, sleep, and do many things. Eat a lot of those delicious foods that we were speaking. And see you not the next Monday, but the other Monday, okay? Have a good night. Okay, good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. Happy vacations. Yeah. Good night. Happy vacations all. Enjoy. 
Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Enjoy and rest. Yeah. Yes. Thank and don't you. forget English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Good night, bye bye. Good night. Good night. Hello, Nelson. How are you? Um, it, it's good that the next day, bed, today in the world and, and at night is it's good. Okay, very good. Perfect. So let me ask you, how do you feel that you are moving with English class? Do you believe that you are learning, that you are getting vocabulary? Where in the first, I I I I have the problem adapted in the in the pronunciation in, in the in the in the learning and the you you tell him and us but in the in the in the next next uh, week uh, I study uh, more language because the the, the, the the topics the logistics the all topics in, in the books or in, in, on the on the unit I, I don't have never uh, and for me my my, my development in, in the in the in the system in informatic is my my occupation but okay. I have the I have the 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 the, the language or the or or, or their um quads the the word I, I I know I know the the all more more but in the in the economics uh, in the logis I, I know how my 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 pawn yeah yeah and for me I difficult but in, in the moment I I have the study vocabulary I I I I I study in, in Google, in, 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 so so I, in the moment I stand on 50 50 percent. Oh, that's very good. So that is nice because you are learning not only English but also about logistics. That's just good. Yeah, yeah, it is good. It's a, it's a topic fantastic because I learn more, but but in the, I don't know in the topic. Very but good. in the moment, I, I have mm, mm, 50%. Okay. Yeah. That's good. And do you have any questions about the topics or any grammar or anything? Uh, I have the, 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 the fear is, is confused in the topic, in the grammar the, the today, because in, in the platform, I, 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 I fear in the, in the, in the task three, 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 two, uh, but uh, I, I had a, a, a exercise, exercise the, 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 the topic the, the today, but I, I not can uh, uh, resolve, but in the moment I, I don't, I don't, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I remember that if you have questions, you can chat with me or you can ask me in the class or you can ask in the group. And of course I will be helping you. Okay, uh, teacher, uh, uh, in the in the one exercise, the unit one, I know uh, is is a resolve. Which one is the one that has a mistake, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. There is there are two exercises actually. I report them already. Uh, one is that it, it doesn't matter what you put; it's going to be always wrong. And the other one is, uh, I guess, in the two and the to you uh -huh. in unit number two, that there are two questions together. So I reported, but by now they haven't changed. So we are going to keep it like that. Okay, but it is good in the, in the, in the three, three weeks, I have the, the learning more. Yes, very teacher. Good. That's good. nice. I'm very <laughs> yes, happy about that. Because, because you, 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 you have, or other strategies, the 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 the, the development, the, the class. Okay, Thank that's you. good. Perfect. Thank yes. you. I'm I'm very happy about that one. Okay, my well, friend. Congratulations, teacher. Ah, thank you. So Nelson, was a pleasure to be with you. Have a fantastic night and have a nice vacation as well. But thank you, teacher. Okay. Uh, I started more 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 English. That's good. That's I need you. Nice. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Bye bye now. Bye bye.